Hi, today we're going over section 1.6, which is reasoning to solve problems. So we'll go straight into some examples of utilizing our reasoning to solve problems. So a student was given a math trick. It was choose a number, multiply by six, add four, divide by two, subtract two. So we're going to try for trick with various numbers and then fill out a table that's on the next page. So essentially choose a number times six plus four, divide by two, subtract two. So let's choose a number, let's say five times six gives us 30. Plus four is 34, divide by two is 17. Subtract two is 15. So let's try a slightly larger number, let's say 12, because sometimes when we go from a single digit to double digits, our conjectures fall apart. So 12 times six is 72, plus four is 76. Seventy-six divided by two is 38. Subtract two is 36. Okay, so next we're choosing another number. Let's try something triple digit. So let's say uh, 242. So that gives us 1,452. Add four, so that's 1,456. Divide that by two, gives us 728. Subtract two, gives us 726. So a pattern I've seen so far start emerging is essentially every number that we end up with is exactly three times our number here. So five times three is 15, 12 times three is 36, 242 times three is 726. So we may try say a negative number to start out with to see how, how that does. So let's say negative four times six is negative 24, plus four brings us to negative 20, divide by two gives us negative 10, subtract two is negative 12. So that is three times negative four. So our pattern was our end number is three times our starting number. What we wanna do now is use deductive reasoning to prove our conjecture. So we had choose a number. So let's select say X as our number. After that, we had multiply by six. So that would be six X. Then we had add four. So that would give us six X plus four. Next we had divide by two. 
So we divide each of these by two. So that gives us three X plus two. Our last step was to subtract two. So that's just going to give us three X. So we have now proven that essentially we get three times our original number utilizing this number trick. Now, in some ways, for some questions, we can prove conjectures utilizing things like this. Other cases, we essentially have to use brute force and patterns to figure things out. So for example, when a volleyball team of seven players won a championship, they high-fived each other. How many high-fives took place if every player high-fived every other player on the team? Now, to help with this, I'm just going to label the players different letters. So we have seven players, so I need seven letters. So I've got player A, player B, player C, player D, player E, player F, and player G. Now, player A is going to high-five player B. We're also going to high-five player C. We're going to high-five player D, E, F, and G. So they high-five six players total. Now, player B is going to high-five a total of six players as well. But some of those players were already high-fived here. So they've already high-fived player A, so we can't count that it again. So they will high-five C, D, E, F, and G. So they have five high-fives. Next, we're on to player C. Now, player C has already high five player A and B, so we can't count them. So they have high five D, E, F, and G. So they high five four players total. Now we're on to player D. They've already high fived A as well as B and C. So they high new high fives would be to E, F, and G. So they have three total. Now we're on to player E. They've already high-fived A, B, C, and D. So we're going to high-five to F and G as new high-fives. And then F has already high-fived A, B, C, and D, as well as E. So they only have G to high five. Now G has already high fived everyone. So adding this up, we've got six plus five is 11, plus four is 15, plus three is 18, plus two is 20, plus one is 21. So 21 high fives total.